This is easily the most exciting milestone of my entire coffee career because today we're talking about my very first espresso machine. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jared. I'm a photographer and a coffee enthusiast from Louisiana. And if you're not new to the channel, then you already know. I've never owned an espresso machine. My love for coffee, my passion for coffee, and I've never owned an espresso machine. Well, I've spent plenty of time working on espresso machines from various jobs and with various friends and things like that. But owning one for myself, having one, having my own coffee bar, it's never happened. So for my very first espresso machine, what did I choose? It is the Rocket Apartamento the Nera series in black. Now I'm sure there are a load of questions about why I chose this machine, how much does this machine cost, what's so special about it, what's so great about it, and I think to answer all those questions we have to start at the beginning. So the very first recordings of espresso dates all the way back to 1884 in Italy. A man by the name of Angelo Moriondo created a machine that would push hot water through finely ground coffee to create a very, very concentrated coffee beverage. The design would later be improved and then patented in the early 1900s, but from the late 1800s all the way until 1961, espresso machines used a lever with a piston to push the hot water through finely ground coffee in order to give you this really concentrated beverage that we've come to know as espresso. But in 1961, that all changed with a machine called the Fiamma E61. Designed and put into production in Milan, Italy, the Fiamma E61 featured a group head that for the very first time used a motor instead of a lever in order to push the hot water through the coffee, creating espresso. Now, this design meant two things. Number one, improved accuracy when it comes to espresso shots. That's because a motorized pump is pushing the hot water through the coffee now in order to give you espresso, and it's going to hit that exact same pressure every single time. Whereas a lever machine, well that's a person pulling a lever down that's pushing the piston down, pushing the water through the coffee. There's going to be discrepancies when it comes to going from shot to shot. And number two, it means that espresso machines can now for the very first time achieve a full nine bars of pressure, which would later go on to become the standard for espresso machines as we know them today. Now all of these advancements and improvements in technology circumnavigate around one very specific portion of the Fiamma E61, and that is the E61 group head. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, the Fiamma E61 would introduce advancements and improvements that would carry all the way down to present day. And in today's coffee climate, things are constantly changing and shifting and new trends are coming and going, but there's one thing that remains steadfast through all of it, and that is the E61 group head. So this brings us all the way until March of 2020. Last year, in the middle of a global pandemic, I started looking for an espresso machine. And I was being very particular and very specific in exactly what I wanted in an espresso machine. And when I started to learn these things about the Fiamma E61 and the E61 group head still being in production and still being implemented in various machines even today, it started to become very clear exactly what I was looking for in an espresso machine. So after months and months of research, I finally pulled the trigger, I finally purchased my very own espresso machine the Rocket Apartamento. So the Apartamento, what makes it so special? What makes this machine so great that I chose this machine over all other espresso machines on the market? Well, first things first, it's a prosumer machine. And what that means is it's not exactly a commercial machine, but it's also not cheap and plasticky like a lot of home machines. The Apartamento fits somewhere in the middle. The build quality, for example, the entire machine is metal. It has almost no plastic on it. In fact, the only thing that's plastic are these knobs that control your steam and your hot water. So it's heavy. 
It's not a small little light machine that you throw in your car every time you go over to your friend's house so you can make them coffees. It's the type of thing that you set up in your kitchen and you leave it. Another thing you look for is the group head. What sort of group head is on the espresso machine that you're purchasing? Now, as we've already covered, this one has the E61 group head on it, which is about as top tier as a prosumer machine is going to get. By the way, a small feature that probably most people don't think about when it comes to buying an espresso machine, but I did, the E61 group head has this little drain apparatus here. And basically what that does is whenever you draw an espresso shot and you finish drawing the espresso shot, there's typically hot water that has built up pressure behind the portafilter. The little drain is designed in such a way as to when you cut the pump off, the hot water and the pressure come out out of the drain and straight into the drip tray as opposed to staying behind the portafilter. A lot of espresso machines don't have this feature and so you run into this thing they like to call portafilter sneeze. Basically what that means is when you unlock the portafilter to take it out, the built up pressure will spit hot water out. Sometimes very forcefully. I've seen it so forceful sometimes that it has completely blown the portafilter out of the person's hand, made a huge mess of coffee and water it's, it's kind of a, it's a bit of a hassle that you kind of have to come to expect whenever it comes with espresso machines, but not with the E61 group head. Another feature that I've come to be very fond of is the no burn steam arm. Now this doesn't mean the steam arm won't burn you, although more often than not, it doesn't. It doesn't even get hot enough that it would burn you. The no burn part basically means that milk doesn't immediately burn onto the steam arm whenever you finished steaming your milk for your lattes, your cappuccinos, cortados, that sort of thing. Thing. A lot of espresso machines don't have that feature. So as soon as you get done, if you don't immediately wipe the milk off of the steam arm, you've got a huge mess. I do it anyways, just because it's a bit of a force of habit just to get the milk off of the steam arm and then give it a little, give it a little purge to get the excess milk from inside of the steam arm out. But this machine is designed in such a way that if you leave it for 30 to 60 seconds because you've wandered off to clean something else up or do something else, you're not gonna have a huge mess when you come back. It also has the water dispenser here on the far side. All that does is dispense hot water so you can make a tea or if you needed a little extra water in your, uh, I don't know, your espresso if you wanted to do that for some diluted reason. Or if you just wanted to clean out your cup or clean out your milk pitcher or whatever the case may be, you've got it if you need it. On top of the machine is a little area for you to put your cups as I have done. It's also a cup warming station, so it keeps your cups nice and toasty. So whenever you draw an espresso shot into your glass, you're not pouring it into a cold glass, ruining the shot. And that's pretty much it. The machine is very, very, very simple. And that's what I wanted. I wanted something that felt very tactile to use. All of the knobs and the levers and everything feels very, industrial, but it's not overly complicated. You've got your steam arm, you've got your group head, and then you've got a hot water spigot, and that's it. And that's what I like, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that's just simple, easy to use, clean, efficient, and this just checks all of those boxes. Now at this point in the video, you're probably thinking, okay, Jared, enough talking, just make a drink already. Okay. Now, this espresso machine has a 58 mil portafilter. You can actually change out the basket size if you want to. As a matter of fact, this bottomless portafilter originally came with a 21 gram basket. I changed that out for an 18 gram basket because, well, I've always used 18 gram baskets. I've never really had any sort of problems with them, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the 58 mil portafilter means that the niche dosing cup, as I mentioned in my niche video, by the way, if you haven't seen the video on the niche, I'll put a link to it up here. I think it's up here. But the 58 mil niche dosing cup fits right on top, making for a really, really, really easy, seamless, nice, tactile grounds transfer thing. Also another feature that I was looking for my espresso machine to have, which this one does have, is pre-infusion. Now if you're not familiar with pre-infusion, don't worry, I promise you're not alone. 
Short answer, the group head allows a little bit of hot water to get onto the coffee grounds to go ahead and soak the coffee grounds to make for a more even extraction when the shot is actually drawing. Now granted, this machine only has line pressure pre-infusion, which isn't like the best pre-infusion in the world, but it's plenty enough for me. Okay, and little, uh, little pre-infusion there, then fire the pump completely. Okay, 18 grams in, 38.8 grams of espresso out in about 42 seconds-ish. Like I said, always wipe down your steam one. It's just good machine maintenance, good habits to have. It's actually a really impressive tulip as well. Now, if we're being completely honest, I've had this machine for about three weeks now. I have yet to have one bad milk texturing experience on this steam arm. It's only a two hole steam tip, which I've heard some people say, having three holes or having four holes is better and you can change this out. But again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It ain't broke. It gives me great milk every single time. Mmm. Ah, that's so good. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, Jared, this machine seems great. It seems perfect. You seem to have no complaints about it. And that's not entirely true. I definitely do have like some nitpicks. Just to give you a very short list of things that I'm nitpicky about. First off, Everything I read online about the drip tray before purchasing the machine said that A, it's magnetic, which it is, but B, the magnets are pretty significant. It really holds the drip tray firmly in place. I've not found this to be true. Um, anytime I go to wipe the drip tray, if I wipe this way, it will almost completely come off, which if it's got water in it, like it does right now, you're talking about a really big mess. It's not a big deal, but a little one. Another small nitpick, I wish the water tank was a little bigger. I mean, it holds plenty of water for me to get through, I don't know, a half dozen, eight, nine drinks, but it's, it's not nearly as big as I kind of wished it was. Now, granted, in order for the water reservoir to be bigger, it would mean the machine would have to get bigger, and I definitely don't want that. Like, the size of the machine is perfect. And by perfect, I mean not too big, but definitely not too small. It's perfect. And the last thing, this one probably should be more of a nitpick for me, but it's not because it just doesn't bother me nearly as much as it apparently bothers everybody else on the internet. But this machine is a heat exchanger machine. Now, what that means is that there's a single boiler inside the machine. It's the same boiler for the group head as it is for the steam arm. And if you're even remotely familiar with how espresso machines work, the group head and the steam arm are typically at two different temperatures. Now, this hasn't been a problem for me, but I have heard people say that they oftentimes will lose a little bit of pressure when it comes to steaming milk and drawing espresso shots at the same time. It bothers some people, doesn't really bother me, but it's definitely something to be weary of. Overall though, this machine's incredible. I, I cannot say enough good things about this machine and, and the way it operates and the way it functions, the way it looks, just everything. It, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's the, it's the best bang for your buck. Speaking of buck, there's probably a lot of questions regarding, okay, how much was this machine? Now, I have no affiliation with the people over at Rocket whatsoever. This machine was not discounted, it was not free. I paid the full market price for this machine. And the full market price was $1,762. That's the cost of the machine with the tax and the shipping, everything, $1,762. But when you like coffee as much as I do, and you visit cafes as frequently as I do, 
It's a pretty good investment. An espresso machine is something that I've wanted for years now, and it's just never been financially achievable until just recently, and that's due largely in part to my wife being totally cool with me purchasing this. Again, this money came out of our bank account. This is money that could have gone towards bills or towards groceries or towards a myriad of other things, yet I was allowed to purchase this. And I say allowed as if she's the only person who has a say-so. We both have a say-so, but she was totally cool from the very, very get-go with me making this purchase. So with all that said, Kaylee, uh, if you see this, which I'm sure you will, thank you. Thank you for letting me make this purchase, make this investment, add this to our kitchen. You're awesome. Seriously, in every way possible, you are awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, make it a point to leave a comment down below. Seriously, I love, love chatting with you guys down in the comments. Make it a point to like the video. And if you're interested in seeing more content about the Rocket Apartamento or about coffee as a whole, make it a point to subscribe to the channel. And yeah, you guys are awesome. Every single one of you. I'll plan to see you in the next one, whenever that is. I'll see you there. Bye.